There was a time back in their prime where Proton Mail, believe it or not, was one of the best email solutions you could get. Encrypted, end to end, great option in Switzerland. Unfortunately, Proton Mail is a shell of the email service they used to be. However, there now is an option that you can utilize to use Proton Mail. In fact, there's always been an option, but it's been unfortunate that Proton Mail has decided to turn their back on the privacy community to be more like the Gmail. And now you've got to take a bunch of added steps for an email service that has become less and less worth it. Now, I'm guessing ProtonMail will probably go out of business in the next couple of years because decentralized emails and emails on the blockchain are going to be a lot better, utilizing things like ring signatures and a bunch of advanced technology to be able to provide email services that are actually private and encrypted. Unlike ProtonMail, who opens all of the back doors and windows for whatever government agency would like, which makes it less and less viable. Now, this has become an issue for a lot of people, and a lot of people are looking for the best email option. ProtonMail and Tutnota are where most people go, and it just is what it is, but you've gotta take a bunch of added steps, which is unfortunate for an email you're paying for, but you do have some options today in Operation Band-Aid Email. Big tech is usually run like a 1997 Honda Civic. You basically got to buy it and then just keep adding and, and bedazzling and spackling things on there to get it to work. However, in this case, if you get Proton Mail, they have a free option, and I've done a few videos on Proton Mail. I used to be a giant fan of Proton Mail before the CEO decided to be the um, big tech insider and the government insider and decided to hell with his customer base, which we've seen happen a lot with privacy tools. We've seen happen with several used to be prominent VPNs. We've seen happen with a lot of different software and services. It's one thing if it's free, like Google. Free, you are the product, you understand what you're getting. But when you're paying for something that's supposedly privacy-based, not so much. It's why a lot of people have started pivoting away from a lot of Web2 technologies that are becoming more and more useless. Even one of the biggest companies in the world, Facebook, changed to Meta uh, because they're trying to stay relevant and trying to stay in business over the next decade like they did the last, which was not good for them, but great for the people. So what can you use? Well, let's break this down piece by piece. Let's say you're gonna use ProtonMail. Let's say you're gonna sign up. How do you need to do this? Well, the first thing is you need to have no identifying information going through this process because ProtonMail end-to-end -end encrypted. Eh, you know, putting trust in ProtonMail at this point, you need to understand that the technology where we're going with blockchain and where we're going with the future of Web3 as far as privacy and security, not just with privacy coins, but with privacy technology, is actually pretty impressive, which is the, the, the silver lining to some of the stuff that's happening in the world right now. With Web2, we're talking email tech that was made decades ago and is completely worthless, and it's you know end-to-end -end encrypted, yeah-ish. Yeah uh, you know, a lot of people have come out and said that it's not what they claim it to be. A lot of people have come out and said it's hackable. So who, who knows? What you need to understand is you need to be in a position where you can protect yourself. So the VPN I recommend you utilize for this is Molvad. Now, I'm a happy customer of Molvad. Been using them for a long time. Have had no issues. You can get them with crypto. So when you get on your machine, if you use something like Hunix, like I talk about, and you're gonna be anonymous. So you have to be anonymous to use your own email and then I recommend using your email anonymously and then I recommend when it comes to email, encryption is ideal, but also being careful what you put in your email is really important, in my opinion. But you know, ultimately what I would do, let's say we've got a stock machine, okay? It could be a Linux machine, it could be a you know, MacBook Pro, it could be, well, it can't be Windows. Let's just pretend it's not Windows because that's, that's not ideal. What I would do in this scenario is I would set it up with VirtualBox or there's other 
Uh, there's other virtual machine softwares. There's actually two other ones that I'm going to do a tutorial on soon. I've done one on VirtualBox in the past and really it's efficient and works well, but there's actually other virtual machine software you can use, but I would set up a virtual machine and then I would set up Hunix and then I would utilize your gateway and your workstation to get on a Tor browser and then I would go to Mulvad and then I would pay for Mulvad with crypto. Okay, so next step would be get Mulvad with crypto. Then I would install that. Then you would have your VPN. Then I would restart my machine. I would bring up my VPN. And then what I would do is I would go and set up my Proton Mail. Okay, so you can go through the process of setting up your Proton Mail. And then what I would do is make sure I only use it on an encrypted tunnel. Now, if you're using your own internet, which you should be, I've talked about how to use a VPN router and encrypt all your traffic so nothing can really be connected to you. But the problem with all of this is if your email provider can't be trusted and you have any identifying information on this, that becomes the fundamental problem, right? Because if you cannot trust your email provider, and that is where a lot of people are struggling with email. The fact is email in general is a more of an outdated communication method that was never really meant to be private. Just like text messages were never really meant to be private. I would recommend zero people text message anybody ever. There's, there's really no reason. You've got apps like Signal and a bunch of other messaging apps, which we've talked about here at PrivacyX, that you can utilize just like your phone and it gives you a compartmentalization layer which is which is really important with email and email technology it's not as secure so i'll tell you two things one 99.9999999 percent of what you say what you do nobody cares about okay the government doesn't care nobody cares and it's really not that important but in your ethos in the back of your mind you should always understand that there is a chance that somebody's able to get into your email, especially if you're emailing somebody Proton that's not Proton. Now, your best option is gonna email people Proton to Proton. That's gonna be your best option on Proton. Make sure you're doing it on a VPN or a DVPN. I've done a dedicated video on Orchid, one of my favorite decentralized VPNs that I use a lot as well. There's a couple other good ones that are coming down. There's a couple other good email. In fact, let me know down below what DVPNs or blockchain-based email services you're checking out. I've had a handful of these companies reach out to me over the last six months. I've been checking out a few. There's a few that are not good, and I'm not in the habit of making videos about how uh, products suck unless they turn their back on the community like ProtonMail or the, uh, we all see what happened with the Pine phone. But for the most part, I try to make positive videos about technology and things that actually help the community. And, you know, the reality is there's a lot of tools coming out, which is really good for the privacy community, really good for people who are trying to become a ghost, really good for people who are trying to not fall in to the social credit score system and not fall into you know the government tracking and the corporate tracking that we deal with on a daily basis which gives us a whole slew of our own problems from identity theft to uh, frivolous lawsuits to people coming after you whether it's stalkers whether i mean there's whole there you know there's basically trolls in every area of the internet at this point and you've got to watch out for yourself around every turn also, you know, the amount of tracking that we are having as a species at this point is unhealthy and just unsustainable, both on the ad side and then also on just the, I mean, we talk about mental health. Well, I mean, the, the internet, it's just a whole nother topic. So we'll go down that topic at a different time. But with email, that's a lot of people's kind of core hub. It's the core thing people are trying to go down and a core thing people are trying to use. Now, if you use Proton to Proton, are you secure? I always tell people, I don't know. I mean, I see conflicting information, so I have no idea. You know, I have no, I, I have no idea. I really, at this point, have no idea. But the reality is, do I still use Proton Mail? I do. And the thing is, I will utilize Proton Mail, and then I, the emails that I need, I will copy and then. Uh, save on an encrypted file so you could use something like Veracrypt, but I don't store any email on an email provider. Also, what I do is 
I run all of my emails. So I talked about how I get on the email provider with ProtonMail using Hunix and using Mulvad, which are two great options. And you can run things through Tor, uh, multiple relays, and then exit nodes. So really, and, and I run everything through a uh, encrypted VPN router. So really, I'm about as secure as I'm going to be at that front, okay? But then if I take all of my email and I route it through, so if you have your own webmail, so for example, you know, my email at, you know, PrivacyX, and if I route that through my own server and then utilize it on ProtonMail, so utilizing my own quote unquote domain, which I recommend all of you do, instead of having, you know, Joe Smith at protonmail.com, have Joe Smith at protonmail.com, but then use your own domain. So if you ever need to pivot or switch, you're not relying on protonmail. You could go to Tutnota or you could go to Startmail or you can go to wherever and your email address doesn't change. So maybe it's Joe Smith at ABC LMNOP, uh, investments.com or whatever your, whatever your business name is. That's ideal, more of a professional looking email. But then to take it a step further, could you run it through your own server? So I use virtual or uh, virtual private servers and I have my own actual server can you run it through the relay there yeah you can is that going to help well it's gonna make sure there's no trackers connected to it and I can encrypt it on my server because I can control my server and then utilize proton mail also you know when it comes to setting honeypots like uh, this email was sent with proton mail was it really well depends right making sure you're checking so not utilizing honeypot links or not clicking on anything uh if you don't understand where it goes to running it through my own server which i could do a tutorial i just don't know if there's a lot of people interested in exactly how i set up my email because it is really technical and so i think for a lot of you you're looking for more of a push button solution you'll probably get a lot more mileage out of a vpn but if there is interest i can make that video it would probably be like a 30 minute tutorial on how to set it up uh, and it does cost a couple hundred bucks because you have to have your own virtual private server. So as opposed to, you know, spending 20 bucks a year on an email, you have to spend a couple hundred bucks on the server. So if that's worth it to enough people, I'll do a tutorial. I just, I don't do a lot of like deep technical tutorials because in the past they, you know, they don't get, a lot of people don't really care. They say they care, but when it comes time to actually watching or doing it, they don't. And I don't want to make these videos if, if people don't care. So the best way to do it is to actually port everything through your own server and then utilize a, a second party service. That's a, that, that's a good option. But in the short term, you could use VirtualBox and Hunix. And if you're utilizing an email that's not directly connected to your identity, like you're buying ProtonMail anonymously, hopefully you're using either wise ghost cards or you're using you know something that's not directly connected to your identity, which I would recommend, then you know, you're a little bit more anonymous. But keep in mind, if, if you get a super anonymous email and the only person you email is your mom and your aunt, it's going to be pretty easy to connect it to you, right? So understanding your email patterns, same thing with call patterns and burner phones, you can have the best tech in the world, but you could be the biggest reason it falls apart. So let me know what you think down below. Let me know what email you're using. Let me know what D VPNs and D emails you're interested in. And let me know if you want to see the technical side or if you just want to keep getting kind of the broad base because I could do the technical video, but if I'm going to do that, I want to make sure people are actually interested in it. Appreciate you guys checking this out. Have an amazing day. If you haven't already, make sure you subscribe. Put out new videos all the time here on Privacy X. Go all into everything you do. Privacy is a right and it's right that needs to be protected. And if you don't protect it, I don't protect it. You can bet big companies and the governments will not protect it. And, you know, privacy really is important. You really are going to regret it if you let it go in the future. I can assure you. Regardless of what you do, taking little steps now to secure yourself before everything is cemented in Web3. See, the problem with Web3 is there's a lot of really, really bad things about Web3. There's also some really, really good things. And the thing with Web3 is you kind of get to make the choice. So I would recommend making the choice that keeps you private and keeps your anonymity and keeps your digital security, which frankly leads to your physical security, both on the identity side and, you know, I mean, all these things are up through the roof. Stalking and, uh, you know, all these crimes and identity theft is up like a thousand percent. Like all these things that are going to matter to you the second they happen to you. So that's all I got to say, guys. Appreciate you checking it out. I'll see you in the next video.